God in our life, be God in our ministries, in our businesses, jobs, career, marriages, families. Be God in everything that we do. Let God be manifested in your life. That the name of the Lord shall be glorified. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for we know that you have done it now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. The word said that the entrance of this word giveth light and understanding to the sin. Lord, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Let the word that we are hearing not be an enticing word of a man, but let it be the word of God that we bring glory to thy holy name in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. What a God. What a great God. What a mighty God. We serve is a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. Heaven and earth adore him. Angels bow before him. What a mighty God. We serve. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Oh, yes, Lord, we bless you. We worship you. Let's go to the word. The Bible says righteousness exalts a nation. But sin is a reproach unto any people. In the book of Proverbs, if your Bible go down there, Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34. Righteousness exalts a nation. A nation is me and you. Every man that you see is a nation. The Bible said righteousness in exalts a nation, a person, a family, a people. But sin is a reproach to any people, any people. So it is just there. Any people that are sinful, They are being reproached. But today, God is going to make something happen for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Because you are coming back. You begin to do right by God. Righteousness is not a big word. It's just living the right way. Doing the will of God. Answering the call when God has called you. The Bible says many are called, but few are chosen. Did you answer the call? Have you been chosen? The Bible says the kingdom of God is nothing but righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. And the king is. Until the spirit is poured out upon us, we can't stand in the presence of God. We can't do the will of God. We can't be who God wants us to be. We have to receive the power to become the spirit of God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. So why is it that we are not representing God in our priesthood? But many of us don't understand. I want to show you something here. If you look at in the book of Exodus 19, the intention of God to the children of God, everywhere you are, if you are called into this kingdom by omission or commission, by God. Exodus 19 kind of spelled it out by verse 3. He said, And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob and the children of Israel, Tell them, you have seen that what I did unto the Egyptians. That is verse 4 now. We are reading up to 6. And how I bear you on my eagle wings and brought you out myself. God is now telling them what he has done, even though many of them were witnesses. But he has to remind them. Verse 5. Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me 
above all people, for all the earth is mine. Now, verse 6 is where I'm going. He said, And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. There are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. You shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. That is what God wants us to be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. But why is it that we cannot even exercise our priesthood? Many of us can't. Because the devil has cornered some people, deceived us. Instead of walking in the dimension of the power of God, then we are powerless. And that's what the devil wants. Want the children of God to be powerless. But let me tell you something. After today, your life will be transformed. In the name of Jesus, that you begin to operate in your priesthood again. Because every child of God that walked the face of the earth, that has come to the knowledge of Christ, have believed in the name of Jesus. The priest is in you. You have to represent God in that priest, priesthood. As a priest, you carry God in yourself. Because every priest represents the deity. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is embedded in you. The Bible is said that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. So if my body is the temple of God, then I have to be God in my job, be God in my family. I have to be God everywhere I go. There must be that element of God manifesting in me. Not just telling people about God, but showing God in all and all. You have to be an ambassador of Christ because that's who we are called to be in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's go to First Peter. The Bible says in First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. It says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation. Look at it. Three things were mentioned there. A chosen generation, that's one. A royal priesthood. So the priesthood is not just priesthood, but you come with royalty. That's a priesthood with, what do I call it? An addition. When you have royalty, you are a king. And now you are a holy nation. A peculiar people that you should show forth the priest of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So we are not called to hide our priesthood. We are called to show forth our priesthood. When you show something, is you exercise dominion. You begin to manifest it. That means it's when something is not right where you are, you are God there. You begin to speak as God. You begin to transform that situation to what you want it to be. I remember when a man of God was fighting Joshua to be precise, and the Bible said, and the sun was about to go down, even though they were winning the war. The Bible said, Joshua spoke to the sun, said, son, stand still until the battle is over. And the sun stood for about six hours. Elijah called fire from heaven, fire came down. That is not the man. It was the God in him that was manifesting that. We have to be priests. That is the only way. Many of us have been trying to live right. It's almost impossible to live right by yourself until you yield to the Holy Ghost and let the Spirit of God take over your physical body and you go and lean on him and let the Spirit lead you. That is the only way you begin to manifest God in everything that you do. The way you can be able to show forth the glory of God in yourself is to yield to the Holy Ghost. In Psalm 51, David said in verse 17, your sacrifice is a broken spirit and a broken and a contrite heart, O Lord, thou shalt not despise. What I'm telling you is I have been a testimony of it. You know, sometimes when you are called into the ministry or into the kingdom of God, you understand the ordinances, they give you the norms and they give you every doctrine and dogmas and sometimes it's almost hard to keep up with. Even prayer becomes very hard. If you pray by flesh, Paul said we pray with understanding and we pray in the spirit. 
the spirit of God having over part of your life. That is only way you fulfill the mandate that God has given you. And it's not something that you do in flesh. You do it consciously and constantly. A broken and a contract heart, you yield to the Holy Ghost. Romans chapter 8, verse 14, the Bible says they that are led by the Spirit, they are called the sons of God. That, that part of you that will become God, you have to allow the Spirit to carry it, to lead you to where you are going. That's where we begin to show our priesthood. I want to show you something uh, before we go forward. There's a man here in the book of Zechariah chapter 3 called Joshua. He was a priest of God. But one thing I love about Joshua was that Joshua knows when to show up. The Bible says in verse 1, and, and he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and sat and standing at his right hand to resist him. Every child of God, if you don't know it, the devil is called accuser of the brethren. If you look at Revelation chapter 12, he is there that the Bible says he, 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 he he resists the Christians, the children of God, day and night. He accused them day and night. So the Bible said the priest of God came and the devil was standing there resisting him. This is not a childish play. If you think that you can live by yourself, you, 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 you are just beginning. You have to let God. And the Bible said, and the Lord said to Satan, the Lord rebuked thee, O Satan. Even the Lord that has chosen Jerusalem rebuked thee. It is, is not this a brand plucked out of fire? So he was saying, is this man not one of them that was taken out of fire? The fire is the altar. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garment and stood before the angel. And he answered and spake unto those who stood before him, saying, take away the filthy garment from him and unto him. And he said, Behold, I have caused thy iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with change of raiment. And the Bible said that was when Joshua was restored. And I said, Let them set a fair might upon his head. So they set a fair meat upon his head and clothed him with the garment, and the angel of the Lord stood by. And the angel of the Lord protested unto Joshua, saying, Thus said the Lord of hosts, If thou wilt walk in my ways, and if thou wilt keep my charge, then will thou, then thou shalt also judge my house, and shalt also keep the court. And I will give thee place to walk among these that stand by. That means you begin to walk among angels. But what am I saying here? The man of God was brought to court in heaven and the devil was there to resist him. Do you think that the devil will fight you on earth? He have access to God. The devil was also created by God. But the only way we overcome is when we are not wearing a filthy garment. The priest was wearing a filthy garment. We don't know what he did. The Bible did not elaborate what he did. But thank God he was a man of the spirit that knew when to come. Remember in the time of Job, Job was not even wearing a dirty garment, but Job was afraid. And when the children of God gathered in Job, Job chapter 1, Job was not there. So it was easy for the devil to accuse him and get judgment. But in the time of Joshua, the devil wanted to play the same game. But Joshua was there, right there. And the Bible says, and the Lord rebuked Satan. Today, I don't know what filthy garment have been put upon you. Maybe it's the garment of sin or garment of fear or garment of whatever. The Lord rebuked Satan for you. In the name of Jesus, every dirty garment that have destroyed you from achieving your mandate as a priest of the Most High. We come against it today. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are chosen of God. Revelation chapter 5, verse 10, the Bible says, and had made us unto God kings and priests, and we shall reign on earth. That means the ability to rule over this earth has been given to man. God has made us kings and priests. That is what Peter said is called a royal priesthood. We have royalty 
and we are also priests. You remember that Jesus did not come in the order of Mekish, um, um, Leviticus, which is the Levitical order. He came on the order of Mekishadek. That's why we are called kings. Jesus was born Judah. So for us taking the nature of Christ, we have become praise to God. Judah is praised. The Bible says the scepter of authority shall not depart from Judah. So from today, you will never be subdued by any authority. Whether physical or spiritual. Because you have God in you. The Bible says he that is in me is greater than he that is out there in the world. Hebrews chapter 7. Look at verse 11. We are going to read maybe down to 22. He said, if therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should raise after the order of Mekishadek? And not be called after the order of Aaron. It's a question. He said, if the priesthood of Levitical, the one that came from Aaron and his sons, that Moses anointed them, and all the priests that came in the Old Testament were under the order of Levitical order. They were under law. But we are not under any law. Unless you want to be. If you want to be under law, you have to be totally perfect. You keep all the laws. But in Christ, you just have to believe in Jesus Christ. When you believe the right thing, you begin to do the right thing. So we came from Christ, which is the order of Melchizedek. Let's continue in verse 12 of Hebrew chapter 7. He said, for the priesthood being changed. So if the priesthood was not continued. It was changed. Somebody said it was better. No, it was changed from Levitical to Mekishedek. There is made a necessity, a change also of the laws. For he whom these things are spoken pertained to another tribe of which no man gave attendance at the altar. And look at verse 14. I'll read 15 and maybe 22 and we'll stop. He said, for it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. Jesus was born out of Judah. Of which tribe Moses spoke nothing concerning priesthood. The, 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 the Judah tribe was, were known for royalty. Jesus came from there. So Moses never spoke anything about priesthood. But look at verse 15. And it is yet far more evident for that after the similitude of Mekishadek, there ariseth another priest. Hallelujah. In verse 17, he said, For he testified, Thou art a priest forever. So the priesthood that we carry is not for some time, it's not going to end here, it's forever. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Mekishadik. I want to say, Praise God to that. Amen. If you look at 21 and 22, he said, For those priests were made without an oath. We are not bound to a law or an oath, but this with an oath by him that stand said unto him, The Lord swear and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. By so much was Jesus made a shorty for a better testament. You know what is a shorty? Jesus paid the price, he was the one that was put as a down payment for his food. He was made a shorty for a better testament, a better covenant. And that is the covenant that we are standing upon. We have to be the righteousness of Christ. Our righteousness is Christ. So every time we come, we are not righteous because of what we have done. We are righteous because we have Christ in us. Let me tell you something. Being nice and good cannot even take you to heaven. But being saved can. Somebody can be so good and so nice and the person will end up in hell. The only thing that guarantees heaven and guarantees rapture and guarantees supernatural ability is to be saved. That is the entrance point, to be saved. The Bible said, if we confess the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in our heart that he died and resurrected, we shall be saved. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. So there must be a physical, verbal confession then you believe. Don't just say, okay, God knows that I've believed in him. No, you have to make a verbal confession. Then you are saved. But when you are saved, that's just the entry. You begin to walk your way up. The Bible says Jesus preached to the Jews. John chapter 8, verse 30. And many believed in him. And he said to those Jews which believed on him, 
if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples again. The only way you overcome the devil is when you put on your garment of priesthood. You don't let it go, go out. You don't let any stain come upon it. The Bible says Joshua had a filthy garment and the devil was there resisting him because of the garment. The moment God said, remove that garment upon him and put a new garment. The devil could not resist him. And the Bible said, the Lord rebuked Satan. Today, every negative garment that has been put upon your family, included in your life or in your ministry or business, the Lord rebuked Satan for you. In the name of Jesus, that you begin to manifest your priesthood. Now we're going to go to Hebrews chapter 12. And we just get the way to keep our priesthood and just maintain it. Because everything that you receive, you must maintain. It is given to you free, but you have to maintain it. In Hebrews chapter 12, it, it, when you hear about what therefore or wherefore is an affirmation of a continuation of something that I've been saying. So if you look at the Hebrews chapter 11, it talks about the hall of faith. Every one that lived and how they went through what they went through. In fact, Let's go to Hebrew 11. The Bible says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. Then if you read down, verse 6, it says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him, God now. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And you start to see people's name being mentioned. Noah was the, 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 the third person here in, in verse 7. He said, but, but Noah being one of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of the house, of his house, by which he con condemned the world and became heir of righteousness, which is by faith. By faith, verse 8, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receiving for an inheritance, obeyed and went out, not knowing whether he went. If you read, it just continued testimonies upon testimonies. But let's go back to Hebrew 12. Now, Hebrew 12 says, Wherefore, seeing we he also acquires about with so a great cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us and verse 2 i love this place that is the christian faith looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith but look at why did jesus finish well who For the set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. The Bible says, For consider him that endures such contradictions of sinners. People were spitting on him, beating him, but he was just there because there was a joy that was set before him. Against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint. You are mine. Consider him that endures such contradiction, such pain, such shame. In verse 4, ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. Jesus has to pay with his blood. His blood was shed for us. So we have a load of witnesses. That's what I want to get there. From verse 1 to 4, we have witnesses. People have gone through. Believing God and God did not fail them. So you will not be the, 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 the person that will break that trail. God cannot fail you. God cannot lie. The Bible says, in two, in two, God cannot lie. If you begin to follow God righteously, absolutely, faithfully, commit yourself unto the Lord and commit your ways unto him. The Bible said he will not only do what he has said he will do, but you will be the jewel of the Lord. You will be called a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, a peculiar nation, 
the apple of his eyes. God will begin to shower you with everything that you, 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 you are expecting to get. Many times people want to chase after the creatures. Jesus gave us the fastest way to solve See the life, Matthew 6, 33. Say, seek you first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Seek first. There's, there's something to be done first and we must do it. Are you ready to do that? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Everything that you are looking for will be added. The rest of them will be an addition to you. So the first thing we have to carry in mind as you walk in this walk of faith, as you walk in this journey of priesthood, is I have witnesses. I have a lot of them. There are some people in our generation that we can pull out from. The patriarchs, people that have gone ahead of us. You can look at around you and in your community and see people that you can look and say, this were men. If you can't, go to the Bible and look backward and you will see a whole load. Well, Jesus Christ is a typical and a current example. Paul. Peter and them, John, you, you see this man came from nowhere, they, but they believed God, absolutely, and God began to show himself. Everything you are looking at today, some of us are busy fighting the devil. You see, Joshua never spoke to the devil, the high priest in Zechariah chapter 3. The Bible said the Lord looked at Joshua, there was dirty clothes upon him, the garment was filthy, and the devil stood on that filthy garment to accuse him, to resist him. But the Bible said the Lord rebuked Satan. Instead of trying to pick up every battle with the devil, try to live right with God. Commit yourself unto the Lord. Soak yourself with the Holy Ghost. And you see that your battles will begin to melt away. That doesn't mean that you will not fight sometimes. But the battle is of the Lord. The Bible says God told Moses. And Moses spoke to the people by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. He said, the Lord shall fight your battle and you shall hold your peace. The Lord shall fight your battle. In Exodus 14, 14, and you will hold your peace. Today, let God begin to fight your battle by the authority and the power. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's time for you to move forward in life, in everything that you do. It is not going to be easy, but I'm telling you, I guarantee you this. Take it to the bank. You can quote me with this. If you commit your ways unto the Lord and let the Spirit of God lead you. The Bible says that they are led by the Spirit. They are called the sons of God. Once you know God to that level, that the Holy Ghost becomes your partner. It becomes your, 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 your comforter. It's your help. It's always there with you. That is when the Bible said that I know the God they serve. Daniel chapter 32 verse 11. They shall be strong and they shall do exploit. You begin to do exploit. But you must know him first. Jesus said in that same John chapter 8. In verse 32. He said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth. He's talking about himself. And the truth shall make you free. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to my father except by me. Once you have a relationship with Jesus Christ and you let the Holy Spirit be a part, that's it. Accessing God is going to be easy. Because if you look at Jesus, his team is Holy Spirit and God. The team of the Holy Spirit is Jesus and the Father. The team of the Father is the Holy Spirit and Jesus. Once you have one or two of them, you have them all. You have to be embedded. You have to be focused. Then that is when the, the Lord will begin to direct your path. Wake you up sometime and say, get up and pray. The Lord will just speak to you, say, it is time for you to walk. God will say, get up and praise me. And you don't know, you are sleeping. Something will just tap you, say, get up. Cover your children with the blood of Jesus. Something will pray, get you up and say, pray over your businesses. Or pray for somebody, pray for your pastor. Pray for your brother, your sister, your father, your mother. And you get up and say in the name of, because there are some things God will not do. If God needs you to hear your voice, he will ask you to say it and do it. And once you say it, he will confirm it. The Bible said the Lord confirmed the words of his servant. We are priests. When you are a priest, you minister to the God that have called you. Hallelujah. 
So if you look at that same Hebrews chapter 12 from verse 5, oh la bagashika tabarika na mama. What is there? Verse 5 is it, and you have forgotten the exhortation which speak unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord. Nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. God, the Bible said, don't despise when God chastise you. So when you are going through some things, especially when you are anchored upon God, not when you are not a believer, you are just out there. You have to first repent and come to the knowledge of Christ. But if you are a Christian and you still go through some stuff, that may, might be that God is chastising you. Because the Bible says, for whom the Lord loveth, he chast is chastened and scourged every son whom he re receiveth. So if God loves you, he will chastise you. Chastising in a, in, in a It's a very, um, what do you call, Polish word to use, but it's a whipping. When God is whipping you, he's trying to get you to do something right. And sometimes it can be in form of hardship, it can be in form of pain, sickness, infirmity. You just have to hold on, as long as you know that you have God, don't go out of God, stay with him and continue to pray and begin to believe God. God will chastise everyone that he loves, because if God does not chastise you, then you are not a son. The Bible says, but if you be without testament, in verse 8, wherefore all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. If God did not correct you, if God did not chastise you, the Bible says you are considered to be a bastard. You are not a son. If you get to the place of sonship, the Father will sometimes chast chasten you. Sometimes the Lord will whip you, the Lord will cor correct you, but it's out of love. He will correct you with the left hand and bring you back with your right hand. But stay in your priesthood. Don't lose that. If you lose everything, don't lose your priesthood. That garment of priesthood that God has put upon you in the spirit is what carries you every day. Because the day you show up at, with that garment, you are not just representing God, but you are God personified. You are standing in the place of God. That's where you can say, I am the Lord. And the power of God will flow through you. You speak to a sick person and say, receive healing right now. Healing will begin to happen. You are manifesting authority. Joel chapter 3, 10, he said, let the weak say, I am strong. Moses asked God in Exodus 4, say, what is your name? God said, I am. That I am. So the I am begin to manifest in you because you are carrying him in your body. Oh, la baga si kataba. Baba. Rakoto robo sheke te balika na mama. Mazeke treba. Hallelujah. And that is where you lift up your voice, lift up your hands. In verse 12 of Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews 12, 12. It's a way for lift up your hand, which hang up down. And feeble knees, that means your knees have to go down and your hands lifted in heaven and make straight paths, your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way. But let it rather be healed. You begin to ask God for healing. Follow peace with all men and holiness with that which no man shall see God. It cannot be overemphasize when you begin to release yourself in prayer and worship and you start to see God move we are going to pray hallelujah and you see God do some great things in your life the Lord said after you begin to pray and fellowship with God because many of us go through weeping and we we we, we, we abandon God in that once you start to see some kind of pick up and then bump in the road in your journey of your life you say no I think I think Christianity is it's not working, it's not worth it, or oh God is not real. I see people confess all kinds of negative things because of one challenge in their life. But let me tell you, the key is Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. As long as your eyes are fixed upon him and your mind and your spirit is focused upon him, you will not miss your way. Even though sometimes you might have some bumps on the road, it might not be easy, but you will always...
get to your destination. Whatever it is, Abraham had to wait for his son for 99 years. At the age of 100, he had his son. How many of us will have that kind of faith? From the time God met Abraham, he was 75 years. So it took another 25 years for the will of God to be fulfilled in his life. What about Sarah? She has gone past monopause. She has gone past every biological cycle of a woman. She is in that night and God showed up and said, well, your body is still fertile. You, will, you give birth again through this same body. And she laughed. Because in the natural realm, it is not possible. But with God, all things are possible. Like when a virgin was being spoken to by a, an angel, Luke chapter 1, and Mary said, how can this be? Knowing that I know no man, the angel said, don't worry, the power from the highest will come upon you. And the thing that you will give birth shall be called the Son of God. And the angel told her, say, for with men, it is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. But thank God for Mary, she said, let it be unto me according to thy word. According to thy word, let it be unto me. Let God be begin to be God in your life now. And that is when you begin to speak according to the will of God in Psalm 110, verse 1. 110, verse 1 to 4. He said, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit on my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. I want you to begin to pray. Say, Lord, make all my enemies to be under my footstool. Let my enemies come under my footstool right now. I pray in the name of Jesus, let all my enemies come under my footstool. Oh, Labaga Shikataba. Lord, make my enemies to come under my footstool by the authority and the power in the name of Jesus. Let my enemies come under my footstool. In the name of Jesus Christ, we bless you, Lord. We worship you. We exalt you. We magnify you. We glorify, we adore you for who you are, who you represent, and who you will always be. Let all my enemies come under my footstool. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In verse 2, the Bible says, The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Receive that rod now. Rod is a, a scepter, it's, it's a symbol of authority. Receive the rod of God. I begin to receive it in the spirit. And the Bible says, rule thou in the midst of the enemy. The Bible did not say the enemies will go away, but they will be there, but you shall rule in their midst. God will give you the ability and the capacity to begin to override everything that the devil has done in your life. Rule in the midst of your enemy. Succeed in the midst of your enemy. David said it in a different way in Psalm 23. He said, thou prepared a table for me in the presence of my en enemy. Thou anointed my help with oil, and my cup overflowed. Rule now in the midst of thy enemy. Right now, let God begin to move in you. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. Oh, in the beauty of holiness from the womb of the morning, thou hast drawn thy youth. Let the womb of the morning begin to bring out the power of God upon you, that the people of God shall be willing the people shall be willing in the day of their power from today. Let, let the womb of the morning open for you and begin to pour out upon you the dews of your youth. Give you the power of the, the kingdom of God. In, give you beauty in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus Christ. In verse 4 of Psalm 110, it said, The Lord hath sworn and will not repent. He said, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. God has sworn in your life. God has sworn concerning your family. God will not repent of that you are clever. Oh, begin to manifest your priesthood in everything that you do. Let God be God by the power and the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord. We bless you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let's read one more place and we are going to Call it a day today. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1 to 5, it says, Arise, shine, for your light is come. The only way you rise when you begin to release yourself to the Holy Ghost, all the things you have said, you have prayed, you have fasted, you submit and commit yourself and go through the process and let the Spirit of God make you. The prodigal son came back to the Father and said, Make me one of your hired servants. You say, God, begin to make me today. And when the time, the fullness of time, the Bible says, you shall arise and you will shine for your light 
is come. I speak unto you today that the light in your life begin to come today. And the glory of the Lord shall rise up upon thee. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth. God did not say wicked people will not exist anymore. They will be there. He said darkness shall cover the earth. Hallelujah. And gross darkness, the people, the people will be more wicked. But the Lord shall arise. Is upon thee, his glory shall be seen upon thee. The Bible says in verse 3, and the Gentiles shall come upon thy light. Unbelievers, the hidden, they'll begin to come to your light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. He said, Lift up your eyes around about and see. All they gather themselves together, they come to thee. Thy sons shall come from afar, and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. But look at verse 5, and we are going to pray. The Bible says, Thou shalt see and flow together, and thy heart shall fear and be enlarged because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee the forces of the gentiles shall come upon thee do you know what the sea is the oceans if the bible says the abundance of the ocean shall be converted this is okata sikata but this is mighty but the bible said that the, 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 the unbeliever shall come the gentiles shall come to your rising and the kings the nobles the the governors, the priests, the presidents, the people in position of authority, mayors, and they shall come to the brightness. By this time, your light is not just in shining in your family. Your light is so bright. They shall come to the brightness of your rising. Receive it. But I want you to see this. He said that God will and be enlarged. God will enlarge you. Because the abundance of the seas shall be converted unto thee. Oh, La Katarba, this is all that unlimited resources. The sea, if, if you have anything to do with the sea, especially when it comes to the business world, you talk you are talking about shiploads of goods and containers and transportation of things. The Bible says the abundance of the sea shall be converted, converted oh, unto thee. And the fourth The forces of the the strength of any man is their force. The Gentiles, the unbelievers, the Bible says the forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. The riches, and that, that's the way I put it. The riches of the Gentiles, of the unbelievers, God will be, begin to give it to you. Receive it now by the authority and the power in the name of Jesus Christ. We bless you, Lord. We worship you. Hallelujah. We give you all glory and adoration. We give you all exaltation. Have your way, O Lord, that your name will be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I want to pray with you right now. If you are here, you have not received Jesus Christ. I'm telling you that the greatest thing to receive on earth is not a million dollars. The greatest thing to receive is not a property. The greatest thing to receive is not being born wealthy. The greatest thing to receive is not even being an American citizen, is to receive Jesus Christ. Once you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, everything that I've said here will be possible. If you are sick right now and you want God to touch you, I want to pray with you, but first, I want us to say, Lord Jesus Christ, I confess you as my Lord and Savior, and I believe in my heart that you died and resurrected from my sins. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Let me pray with you if you are sick in the body right now. I want you to put your hand upon your head as I speak unto you right now. By the authority and the power, the Bible said, Oh, Labaga Shikataba, Lamogo Sakataba, you sent your word, Holy Spirit, and your word healed them. Jesus Christ, let the word of God come upon your daughter, your son, right now. And heal them from every sickness and infirmity. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord. We bless you. We exalt, we magnify you in Jesus' mighty name. Whatever is going on below your abdomen, every pain, every kind of spirit of fibroid, we break it out every pain on your shoulder, every form of stress or any kind of pain in your ankle, at your knee, going back to your back, your waist, your shoulder, on your neck. We say, let it go now. I speak life to come upon your body now. In the name of Jesus, Jesus said, he said, I have come that you should have life and have it in abundance. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for we know that you have done it right now. I release the life of Christ upon you. John chapter 10 verse 10. Jesus said, I have come that they might have life and have it in abundance. That life I give unto you because we have abundant life. We release it to you right now. Receive it 
by the authority and the power in Jesus mighty name we pray thank you Jesus for we know that you have done it thank you Holy Ghost I love you all with all my heart by the grace of God we are coming back tomorrow and I will see you then when we come back God bless you and have a wonderful week ahead of you in Jesus